Welcome back to our channel, The Warriors. We are still growing. If you haven't had that homie that always burns the pizzle, smash that subscribe button. Go ahead and have him smash you right now. First and foremost, let me give a shout out to the following individuals that have been blessing me on my last two lives. Priya These Nuts, The Jabs, Esquiel, The Retired CO, JMG, Michigan Wolverines, Esquiel, FPSD, El Skid, The Retired CO, and David. Thank you. I appreciate that I see that. My goal is to buy an Oculus Quest, right? After I watched that video yesterday, no, yes, after I watched that video yesterday of the incarcerated individuals at Valley State Prison, they were on the Oculus Quest, I'm like, ain't that about a bitch? Your boy just sold his last month to make ends meet, ain't that a motherfucker, man? The irony, right? The irony, son of a bitch. Now, on to the patrons, J, Keith, K, Devil Dog, MCC Placa, Ricardo, Mel Adjusted, Bankroll Suave, Mickey Bats, Carmine the Pitbull, American Mestizo, Lori, 559CO, Ruben, Cornbread Killer, Herbuma AZ, CJ Zavalza, Evil P Whisper, Armando, Fuck Your 602, Las Vegas Flights Live, Gavino, Valentino, the Latino Cochino. <laughs> I didn't skip a fucking beat. I did not skip a beat. I did not skip a beat. I'm not gonna lie. I look forward to going down and just popping off at the mouth when I come across your new changes of names, man. Priya these nuts, keep it up. <laughs> Lockdown 5, Crystal Bond, Abuelita's Journey, Abuelita's Irma, La Reina, Hernan, Winston, Tony, the Mexican Snowman, El Skid, Hobie Cat, Lead with Love, Elber 12, J.I. Esquiel, Big Bad 48, Nova, Linda, the retired CEO, Michigan Wolverines, Mikey 559, the homie Marius, Chevelle 66, GG, and Dal Serrero. If you haven't already signed up for that Patreon, make sure you hit that link in the description below. I'm telling you, you're definitely missing out. This episode right here, man, I'm still laughing. I'm still laughing about this, man. I love the patrons so much so, so much so, that I said, hey, you're going to give me your best topics you want me to talk about, right? So this one right here is from Patreon. Member Audit 640 gave me a big giant list. I said, I got you, my boy. I got you. And don't get it twisted. There's a whole bunch of other topics I'm going to cover. I was going to say no particular order, but it is an order because I'm reading from like the top to the bottom. He wants me to talk about how there are 100 golf carts assigned to everyone else, but not available to, yards, to the yard CEOs. Perfect. Anybody that's been to a prison, worked at a prison, knows. I'm going to make a whole episode on free staff. Don't you think I'm not paying attention? I've had 100, okay, maybe 50 people tell me about to make one on free staff. And I will. I'm going to, right? I'm just, this is probably a good break right here. Talking about golf carts. Medical personnel have golf, golf carts. Plan ops, maintenance people, plumbers, electricians have golf carts. Administrators, warden has a golf cart for no reason. Uh, captains, healthcare captain have a golf cart. You get the whole idea. All these motherfuckers have golf carts, right? They put a little lock on them. I, I will say this. When I was a CO, I stole the TTA sergeant's golf cart. I truly did. My key broke, right? One of my keys broke. I went to the back of the locksmith. I was working Charlie Yard, level four GP killers. And I hear code two, code two on the radio. And I had a broken key. I was in the back in the sally port in the locksmith. And I hear code two. But I was so over and so tired. I was like, nah, fuck it. <laughs> so instead of hurrying my ass back up for the code two riot that was ensuing, I was in the back posted, man. That's this goes to show you, like, did I want action? Like, you, you get so much, right? You, I'd already been involved in riots, and I'm like, eh, I got a golf cart. It's summertime. My key's broken. Nah. So anyways, I wait. To, I wait. I purposely wait. And I go back afterwards, and I'm like, hey, what's up, guys? Did I miss anything? And they're like, oh, you're a dick, bro. You're a dick. And that lady, the female sergeant, she chewed me out for stealing her golf cart. I told her, like, I I put the whole emphasis that my key was broken, right? So they couldn't really trip on that. Anyhow, that was a good story. came to mind. Um, 
But yeah, CO can't get a golf cart. I had to steal one from the sergeant's office. From the sergeant's uh, TTA. ADSEG gets golf carts. ADSEG, the whole. Because you have to transport inmates from wherever. r and r one yard to another, when they're getting transported to ADSEG. Again, ADSEG, restrictive housing now, which is what it's called, is a thing of the past, doesn't exist. How CEOs on the yard share an office separated by a divider with the program clerks. Well, bro, I, or, I don't know if this is a male or a female, but like, the office that the CEOs share, how CEOs on the yard share an office with Okay, where 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 I was at Sentinella and Donovan, the officers. I mean, they could the S and E's. The S and E's could post up the the S and E's. Their their the yard cops could post up in the uh, sergeant's office. Now the dispo officer, the one that types up the RVRs, the one fifteen gets all the paperwork. Let's say for those that don't know, in California prison, let's say an inmate break the rules, they were found with wine, right? Homemade pruno. And there's pictures. It's that dispos officer's job to go around collecting the evidence, issuing out the first copy, right? It's just like a court proceeding. So the inmate has his rights and evidence. He has the whole thing. So there's a little desk in there for the um, officer to sit with the lieutenant. Those guys, those people promote to sergeant for sure. Um, you need to know your RBR process if you want to promote to sergeant. And then there's the... Area where the inmates, the clerks are. When your boy was a lieutenant, I used to just chop it up with the clerks, man. Usually you don't put a a POS, right? You don't put somebody with, you sure don't put nobody with an S offense or an R offense in your in your program office. Like, I don't know if that's a rule or not. It's just something that I've never seen done. It's not practiced. Um, And you just chop it up, man. And you like, Hey, man, give me some red folders. Those are the incident folders, the incident fucking. I got another incident. Give me a red folder, man. Cool. Hey, how you going? How's it? Good morning, Lieutenant. How you doing? We're about to see right now. Let me check this email. Fucking bitch ass motherfucker. I'm doing all bad, man. <laughs> they laugh, right? They A lot of the program serfs got to see me flip out. Uh, and um, on Delta Yard program, they would overdose a lot in the program office, no less. I never, when I was there, that would be weird. I, I would get pit. I would have got. It would. On, I was on my day off or somewhere else. They were definitely overdosing. Then they would get rewarded and go to Echo Yard, where the Menendez brothers are as a reward. How the academy graduation and report date to the institution is just two days. How the academy graduation and reported is just two days. How can you find a place in a remote area right away? Eh. Yeah, it's two days. You graduate on a Friday. You show up to work on a Monday. That's how I met my wife. Well, that's not how I met my wife. We were talking through the MySpace, right? Flirting through the MySpace and... uh we had set it up where when I graduated the academy, I was going to shoot straight to her, her pad in San Diego and spend the weekend. And I did. And it's been on and cracking fucking what, 17 years already, almost close to damn near 17 years. Um, yeah, you would have to plan that shit in advance about you relocating. I'm going to give you some advice, man. Advice. I personally would not relocate my whole entire fucking family for a job. For CDCR. No, I definitely won't. Wouldn't. I almost did. I almost did. Had I gotten picked up as a sergeant at CIW, the female prison, I would have moved myself and my wife to uh, Eastvale. And I thank God they did not pick me up. That would have been a mistake. You don't want your spouse to be miserable. That's going to end bad. How supervisors misunderstood the working break. It's kind of funny because I was a supervisor and I'm not too sure about the working break, but I could understand that we work a straight eight. We don't get a lunch break. So you eat when you can. Pretty much eating all the time. 
when you're not working. How everyone in law enforcement have a cell phone except COs. Well, yeah, there's a new thing, and I'm gonna I gotta warn you guys about this. <laughs> there's a new thing happening, in case you guys don't know, in California. Well, first of all, COs were out banned. See, COs. Cell phones were banned, right? Absolutely fucking banned. You cannot take your cell phone into a prison. Do people do it? Yes. Did I used to do it? Yes. At Sentinella, they put cell tower blockers. Um, they put cell tower blockers so it could jam the signal. Inmates found a way to defeat that. I don't really want to give up game. You guys already know. But uh, Donovan did not have cell phone tower blockers. Everybody would take their shit in. Anyways, if you get caught with a cell phone, <clears throat> you're going to get probably like, they confiscate it, they take it up to the warden, you get like a 5% pay cut reduction for like a year. <laughs> If they don't just give you a little slap on the hand. It depends, man, how far they want to go with it. You got to personally go up there and get your shit back from the warden. You can get an ass chewing. But the newest thing is they're going to let you uh, take your cell phone in. But from what I heard, from what I heard, certain ISUs, goon squads, are taking down your SIM card number, your EID, whatever the fuck numbers. I would never give them that shit. That way they could probably tap into your phone. I'm not a smart guy, technology-wise, or any otherwise, but... uh. Nah, fuck that. Ooh, this is a good one, man. I saw this when you shot it. How you don't have training anymore, just LMS nonsense. So let me tell you about LMS. It's the uh, learning management system. Believe it or not, I looked into learning management system when I left the department because I was going to do my own training. Let me know if you guys want me to do my own training for the department. My own fucking training. Right? Of course, I cannot rewrite policy. Of course, I can't do this, that, and the other. But hey, man, verbal judo, pretty fucking efficient with verbal judo, man. That's communication skills or de-escalation skills. Uh, but there is a time when you stop talking and it's all action. You guys know that or you should know that. If not, you're going to find out the hard way. Basically, everything's on computer now. I told you guys 2012, we got SOMS, the Strategic Offender Management System. And when a new policy comes out, let's say the California model, right? The Norway model. You have to get on the computer. You have to log on to LMS. You have to do a little fucking, it's probably just a memorandum. It's probably just a stupid fucking memorandum. There's a PDF file, a memorandum. You allegedly read it and then you click your signature. Boom, you're trained. Anything you do now, you're fucking held liable and they're going to fire your ass. That's the truth. That's what training looks like. So if you don't pay attention or read or, or which is kind of difficult because you're actually working. So, yeah. How inmates writes the CO more than vice versa. Oh, inmates will write up COs all the fucking time, all day, every day, man. <clears throat> I've had inmates try to write me up, but I beat them to the pen. Good friend told me once a guy, the person quicker to the pen, the person quicker to the pen wins. That's the truth. Um. And here's why, in case you guys don't know. California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation does not like to go to court. Will not go to court. They will settle out of court. So if an inmate, Jones, says that Lieutenant Bravo slapped them around, upside down, up and down the program office, they're going to investigate that. I'm going to be under investigation. They're going to do a thorough investigation. They're going to interview officers. They're going to interview sergeants. They're going to interview inmates. They did, in fact... Lieutenant Bravo's pitch, bitch slapped the motherfucker. Yes, no, maybe so. What do you know? Then he's going to sue me, right? Then after a few years of this bullshit, I'm going to get subpoenaed. We're going to find out that the inmate got paid out $5,000. And be like, the fuck that inmate get paid for? Oh, because they settle. It's easier to settle than to take them to court. Every inmate knows this, so why not do it? I mean, why not? I would be the best inmate. I'll be the best, motherfucker. Soft shoe chrono, eggshell mattress, double toilet paper. What else, man? The whole nine. How many, uh, how inmates appeal the process a hundred times by the hundred times they have perfected the story. That's a fucked up part about it. If an inmate alleges something against you. Okay, check it out. Perfect example. We're on a roll here. Inmate Jones allege that Lieutenant Bravo just slapped him around the program office. 
They investigated one time, nothing there. Motherfucker refiles. They investigated it again. Doesn't even have to refile. The department is doing some weird shit years where they'll just continue to look for dirt. Hey, motherfucker, it's been proven. I clearly didn't slap this motherfucker around, right? They'll look it over. One, two, three. By that time, you've already changed captains, AW. These stupid assholes are trying to suck a dick to get to the top. Next, you know, they'll be coming up with rainbow patches and their great ideas. Four, five. Man, Hector, you be speaking the truth. Now I know why you left, my boy. Yes, 100%. Who wants to deal with that shit? Look at this luscious-ass black hair that matches my jacket in the background right here. I'm a fucking accessorizing, motherfucker. <sighs> By the 20th fucking time that they investigate the fact that I did not... <laughs> that I did not... Slap inmate Jones. They're going to be like, oh, well, look, Lieutenant Bravo was wearing white socks instead of black socks. He's out of uniform. Write him up. Oh, look on this one. We didn't catch it the first 19 times. But look, Lieutenant Farrell or Bravo, that's my real name, is on his cell phone. He's not supposed to be on his cell phone. Write him up. Shit that they didn't catch prior. Shit that shouldn't have even been brought up continues to get surfaced up. So which is kind of fucked up because that's not what they that's not what initiated the investigation. Right. It is a cutthroat mother... It is cutthroat. Nah, I'm cool. How the researchers that create prison studies are full of shit. Never seen them, but they claim most are non-violent marijuana charges, so on and so on. (coughs) How the research... Well, it's all money, bro. It's all fucking money. It's all a money grab. It's all a political scheme. Power, money, greed. Right. Power, money, greed. Now... From my personal experience, right? And again, I'm being... I want to say I want to be non-biased, but this may have a little bias in it, so don't take it for fucking fool, whatever you want to call it. Just take it at uh, the surface or whatever. I always used to say, in prison, they say that drug offenses are non-violent offenses. But I would always say, have you ever seen... What happens to a drug addict in prison that does not have dope? They become violent. Whether that's true, whether that's not true, I've seen violence. I've seen a lot of violence. So you can kind of see that. How that and or dope creates violence. Drug debts, two-on-one murders. It it goes hand-in-hand in in my book. Again, not my whatever the fuck. You guys hear what I'm saying. I think that's what he was going along with. I cover that plethora of fucking questions uh with that the message for today man is like clearly we're not the only ones that see it and again that problem is not on the lower level the real problem lies at the top man and there's about to be twenty five thousand warriors subscribing stinking excuse me got the bubbles from right here i was thinking man we're twenty five thousand deep And we're not fucking lames, let me tell you. The people that have followed along and continue to follow along are built the same. Don't give a fuck what your background is, right? This is the truth, man. Blue, green, it doesn't matter. Every like-minded individual. As a matter of fact, I'm going to end it like this. I'm going to end it like this. This is the the highest... uh, This is a nightmare for the the, the people with the power. Cause they're like, holy shit, they're not fighting each other. Holy shit, they've come to realize the eyes are on us now. I was on the phone with an OG prison guard, started or worked in the early 90s, grew up in the hood. Uh, I believe Compton, he said, white dude, OG. He reached out to me. We start get to talking. And he's like, hey, man, I feel you. I feel you like the inmates, like the convicts, man. It's like, hey, you could be straight with them. You could shoot straight with them. They could shoot back, like shoot straight, like shoot the shit straight with you. Like there's a problem. It'll get solved, right? Preferably with words. And he's like, I never thought I was better than them, man. He's like, I never thought I was better than them. He said, uh, I would tell them straight up. Cemeteries and prisons are full of people like me. And I'm like, I get that, dude. Like, I hit that shit hit. I'm like, I'm going to steal that from you. He's like, go for it, bro. Run with it. I'm like, yeah, man. 
meaning addiction, trauma, ain't nobody exempt. Which reminds me of another story. I was going to end it right there, but it just reminded me of another story. When I was in rehab, inpatient treatment, 28-day inpatient treatment for, for my alcoholism, I was 26 years old. I was working at Sentinella State Prison as a CO at the time. There I am sitting in rehab in a room, the doctor's right there, whoever the clinician is, in a circle. You have other people in there in the treatment. One dude who was a parolee looks at me and he says, don't you feel bad, man? Don't you feel bad that you swore in you're part of the law enforcement you're part of you're a law enforcement officer and here you are breaking the rules and uh, you're in rehab. <laughs> Man, the fucking the eyes of the ner- female doctor lady like got big as like she was about to jump to shut him down. I said, no, 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 hold on, I got this, man. Man, I'm like, I said, hey, check it out, dude. Alcoholism doesn't pick and choose who it's gonna fucking hit, man. Right? I got I got alcoholism. And that kind of just uh I'm an alcoholic. And that kind of just, you know, shut it down. Respectfully. But yeah, man. Everybody is going through something. Right? Reach out. Ask for fucking help. Keep pushing forward.